Back in 2019, Osprey Games released Undaunted Normandy, a two-player deck-building war game from designers Trevor Benjamin and David Thompson. It immediately smashed into BGG's top 100 for both thematic and war games. Fans praised its accessibility and simplicity of gameplay, the clear art and absorbing stories. Now in 2020, they're back with a standalone sequel, Undaunted North Africa. A similar style game, but the action has moved to Libya and the fascinating battles between the Italians and the LRDG, the Long Range Desert Group. The LRDG were a huge part of World War II's history and something that I wasn't aware of. I've now read a fair bit about it and after playing through the 11 scenarios in the box, I feel I've learned something as well as enjoyed the experience. Normally I find it somewhat awkward to play a war game, especially when it's based on historical events like this. There is a risk with any war game that you could trivialise, mock, avert the historical facts. Undaunted North Africa does neither. It honours the past, the story told is factually accurate and the focus is on the remarkable feats of strategy that occurred in the battles in Libya between the autumn of 1940 and 1942. And I couldn't recommend this game enough. Let's have a look to see how it plays. The rules and gameplay in both Normandy and North Africa are very similar. This will feel familiar to players of the first game, but it does add a few changes to the rules. Namely, there's no more respawning, the game is far more asymmetric, and now you can drive tanks. The game comes with a detailed and easy to read rulebook, as well as a mission log with 11 scenarios to play through. Each battle you will play as either the Italian patrols defending their bases and troops, or the plucky LRDG desperately trying to ambush, capture and destroy the Axis infrastructure. You are given a mission objective to try and complete. Generally for the Italians, this will be to lock down and defend their bases and for the LRDG, you're looking to destroy them. There's also missions where you're looking to neutralize specific opponent's troops or get vehicles and certain combat counters off the board in a valiant escape. Let's set up mission one. In both undaunted games, you are following a set of battles in a campaign scenario. Using modular tiles, you set up the board for each situation, adding units, vehicles, structures, and objectives. You are then given a mission-specific set of cards for your deck and supply. You draw four cards from your deck. Each player picks one to determine who has the first turn, the initiative. Both players discard the card they chose for this, and then play begins. Each side is left with three cards to, amongst other things, move, attack, scout, command, bolster, conceal, and inspire their troops. Players play their cards in turns, making the initiative, the chance to play first, very important in some missions. In later missions where vehicles are introduced, you could have a plan to move your tank to a certain part of the map to defend a base or attack a certain soldier, but by the time you get to your turn, the opposition could have disabled or worse, destroyed your tank. Players play each card in turn using the powers available on each card until all cards are used up. Play then moves to the opposition player who does the same. You then redraw four cards Choose the initiative and repeat. In this mission, as the Italians, you are looking to control enough bases to gain three mission points. You do that by moving a troop with the control ability on the card onto a previously scouted terrain and using the control action. The LRDG in turn are trying to destroy your bases to acquire three mission points. They do this by carefully maneuvering their engineers who are experts in demolition to the spaces that the bases are on and using the demolition action. This works like this. You first calculate the defence value of the base you're trying to destroy. In this case, six. The engineer is trying to destroy the plane. You then add on the tile defence, in this case, zero, and then the range, also zero, as the engineer is on the same space as the base they're trying to destroy. This all adds up to six. You then roll up the number of dice as indicated by the action that you're using on the card. In this case, three, the demolition number. You roll the number of dice to see if you can beat the number. In this case, a success. As such, I would then remove this tile from the board and take the allocated number of points towards my mission goal. This is how you attack troops. In this case, the Italians are trying to take out the engineer before they make it to another base. The Italians have access to riflemen in this scenario who have access to one single dice in an attack. They attack in the piece here with a defense value of five on a tile with a defense value of zero. They are one space away, so in total they need to roll more than a six. If they are successful, the opposing player will move one of the cards of the defeated troop first from their hand if they don't have one in their hand or they've already played their cards on this turn, they remove one from their discard pile. If there's none in their discard pile, then they remove one from their deck. If they have no card left in the deck of this troop, then that combat counter is removed from the board for the remainder of the game. 
Players will continue in turns, moving their troops, attacking opposing soldiers, defending or destroying bases until one player achieves their mission objective. We found we played through the entire mission log in a few nights, keeping the same sides each time. We became quite attached to our soldiers and wanted to understand and fine tune the use of their abilities. When we finished, we ran through again, keeping the same sides again. Loyalty won over curiosity. Now on a third playthrough, we're trying the game from the opposing sides finally. We're still loving it just as much as the first game. I can see us playing this for many more years to come, at least until the next one comes out. We have loved playing this game. I think that because you're reenacting something that happened, albeit loosely, it feels so absorbing. And this brings me back to my earlier point. It didn't feel trivial or callous to enjoy these experiences. Yes, the death of a cardboard token is obviously nothing to the real life sacrifices that were horrific, but the stories must be told. We should never forget the acts of courage and military strategy that brought us all our freedom. I'm not the kind of person who will sit and watch a two hour documentary on the History Channel or read a large volume of books about war. I wish I was, but I know I'm not. But I will play Undaunted North Africa till the small hours. That's just me. And if you're like that, if you love board games and want to have a wonderful experience in a two player game that will immerse you in a gripping story that happens to be true and teaches you something about one of the most significant moments of the 20th century, then this game may be for you. Trevor Benjamin and David Thompson are onto a winner with this series. I can see this running for many more years. There's so many stories to tell and this mechanic does justice to not only the stories that unfold, but the genre and the industry. This is not a deep war game, don't get me wrong. It won't satisfy fans of games like Advanced Squad Leader, but for a more sedate family experience in the genre, I couldn't recommend this game enough.